not ready to have a baby at this point in life? Does the thought of getting pregnant terrify you? Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss 14 birth control methods you and your partner can consider to prevent pregnancy. So what exactly is birth control? Birth control is a common term used to describe contraception, which are methods used to prevent fertilization of an egg and therefore prevent pregnancy. Now in this video, I'll look at five main categories of birth control. The natural methods, barrier methods, chemical methods, hormonal methods, and then finally surgical methods. Now for each of these categories, I will outline the purpose of each method and look at the advantages and disadvantages of them. So let's begin with the first category, the natural methods. So these methods are usually cost-free, non-invasive, and will be based on behavior. So the first common method would be abstinence. Then we have secondly, the calendar or the rhythm method. And thirdly, the withdrawal method. So let's look at abstinence first. So it simply means choosing not to have sex. So obviously this method will require a lot of willpower, discipline, and restraint, but there are some advantages to this method. So it's the best birth control method, especially for young persons who are not in a committed relationship. It is 100% safe and effective, and it will protect you against STDs. So therefore there's no need to worry about possible pregnancy or infection. But obviously the disadvantage would be lack of sexual intimacy or pleasure. Now let's look at the second natural method, which is the rhythm method. So this rhythm method is based on the menstrual cycle. So it is concerned with restricting sets to times when fertilization is unlikely to occur. So that will be during the infertile periods. So if you look at this diagram, we see that the menstrual period usually would occur the first five days of the cycle. That can go on to about seven days. So the safe period would follow the menstrual period. So meaning that is very unlikely for an egg to be present in the female reproductive tract and less likely for fertilization to happen. So really and truly the only fertile period that would be present within the menstrual cycle is going to lie in the middle of the cycle. So we have that around say days 11 to around 17. So typically ovulation time would happen at the middle of the cycle, usually around day 14 to 15 if you have a regular cycle. So you have to take into consideration that sperm can live at up to five to seven days within the female reproductive system. So that is why we have this error margin. So although the egg may be released on day 14 or day 15, you still have to take into account that the sperm can live for a good while. So if you have sex on day 11, then there's still a high risk of getting pregnant the fertilization can occur because of the length of time that the sperm can actually live within the female reproductive system. So then following the fertile period, we have this, the net safe period, which is after um, ovulation has occurred. The egg only usually lasts for about 24 hours or so. So once that egg is gone, is disintegrated and is not, you know, viable for fertilization anymore, then you have the safe period following that fertile period. So the rhythm method really would be ideal for those with a regular cycle. So the advantage of the rhythm method is generally easy to track your fertile period using various apps and you can also observe the cervical mucus discharge. So when you are in your fertile period, the mucus tends to look like raw egg white tends to be of that consistency very pulley so that indicates that you are within your fertile period now the disadvantage would be the fact that this method is not going to be reliable definitely not ideal for women who have irregular cycles after all if their periods are coming at you know various times it not is not coming on time as it should is not coming as clockwork then it's not going to be very good in terms of tracking when your fertile period would be. It's going to be very difficult. So this is a method that is not ideal for women with irregular cycles. 
Okay, so let's finish up with the rhythm method and let's go on to the third natural method, which is the withdrawal or pull out method. Now, the biological term for this is coitus interruptus. Basically, you're interrupting intercourse. So during intercourse, the male removes his penis from the vagina before ejaculation of semen occurs. Now, with this method, it may seem simple and straightforward, but the disadvantage to this is that it's very unreliable since the pre-ejaculate can contain traces of sperm. And by pre-ejaculate, I mean that clear fluid that is released from the penis during intercourse before the main ejaculation of semen occurs. So there's a chance that some sperm may be present within this pre-ejaculate. So that is a risk of possible fertilization happening if the sperm gets into the female. And then secondly, the other disadvantage would be it can disrupt the female's climax during intercourse when the male pulls out. So the withdrawal method is definitely not an ideal method to use. It is pretty unreliable considering the fact that there's a possibility of some sperm being present in the pre-ejaculate. Alright, so that covers the natural methods. Let us move on to look at the barrier methods. Now barrier methods as the name implies, these will be used during sex to prevent or to bar off the entry of sperm into the female reproductive system. So these would include the common male condom, the less common female condom, and then also the less common cervical cap and diaphragm. That's the other name for the cervical cap. So let's look at the male condom. So the male condom is obviously the most popular, more common form of birth control. So it's very commonly used. Um, it's a rubber sheath placed over an erect penis before intercourse to catch the semen and prevent entry into the female. Now the female condom, which is less used, it's also a rubber sheath inserted into the female's vagina and it should cover the cervix and therefore prevent any semen from reaching the, the um, fallopian tubes, the sperm from reaching the fallopian tubes. So the main thing is to have that cervix covered. Now in the images shown, you can clearly see that the two condoms are pretty similar in appearance, but you will notice that the female condom has two rings and I'll show you exactly how the female condom is actually inserted and how it actually works. So in the diagram you can see clearly that there is one end that is open so that is the open ring and then the other end is the closed end. So basically that open end would allow for the penis to enter the vagina and the closed end is the part that is going to be covering the cervix. So you see exactly how it is inserted into the vagina. So that closed end needs to cover the cervix and prevent any entry of the semen. So that is the female condom. So you can see why it may be less used. It's a little more invasive having to insert it in before sexual intercourse. But generally, the advantages to the condoms would be that they're usually easy to use. They protect against STDs, unlike many other birth control methods. And the, they're relatively cheap in cost. Now, the disadvantages to using condoms, as I mentioned just now, the female condoms are a little more cumbersome to use, having to put that in just before um, intercourse. They are not 100% effective. So condoms can break. And aside from the risk of the condoms breaking, the condoms can actually cause irritation to genitals, especially if someone may have a latex allergy. So latex is the common material that condoms are made of, but there are also alternative materials such as polyurethane. So if you have a latex allergy, you may have to resort to using those type of condoms. And obviously, if you're using the condoms incorrectly, they will be ineffective. So using two condoms at a time will not provide extra protection. So that would definitely increase the friction and increase the risk of breaking. And then in terms of the male condom, putting on the condom correctly, you have to remember that when you remove the condom from the package, the tip of the condom, the top part, when you roll it down, it should be easy to roll down. So the top part should look like a sombrero more so than the top of a bottle. So these are things to take into consideration when using the condoms. So there's the pros and there are the cons. 
All right, let's move on to look at the third barrier method, which is the diaphragm, also known as the cervical cap. So this is a rubber dome-shaped cup inserted into the vagina before intercourse. So it's going to cover the cervix and collect the semen. So it kind of acts a little bit like the female condom. So it covers that cervix and prevent the entry of the semen. Now the advantages of the diaphragm, they can be used multiple times. So it can be reused as often as you want and it can last for up to two years. So you don't have to worry about purchasing multiple um, diaphragms for many uses. So it can be reused. So that is the good thing about the cervical cap. Now the disadvantages, they must be prescribed and fitted by a doctor. So you cannot just go into the pharmacy and pick up a cervical cap from off of the shelf. It has to be prescribed and fitted by a doctor. Remember, all females are going to be different in sizes. So that is something you have to take into consideration before um, getting the diaphragm. So it's also going to be a little difficult to insert into the vagina, as you can imagine. So this is a rubber dome shaped cup going up into that area. So it's not going to be very easily um, use and then the cap actually needs to stay in place six hours after intercourse so after the activity you can't just remove it like how you would with the the condoms so they should be kept in there for about six hours and no more than 24 hours so the whole reason for this is just to reduce the risk of any spillage of semen and any of that getting into the female reproductive system so that is something else to consider as well and the diaphragm is not going to protect against STDs so it is not like the condoms so it will not provide any protection against STDs all right so that completes the barrier methods let's move on to the chemical methods now the chemical methods would be the spermicides which are inserted into the vagina to kill the sperm. So they come in various forms. You have foams, you have creams, you have gels. Now the, these methods are usually easy to apply, affordable to use. However, they are not reliable on their own and should be used with a barrier method. Example, the same condoms we just talked about and the diaphragm. So they definitely are not useful on their own because there's an increased possibility that, you know, every single sperm is not going to be killed by the chemical within the spermicides. So it's, al it's always safer to use them with a barrier method. And then there's the possibility of genital irritation um, that can be caused by frequent use. So those are things to consider when using the spermicides. All right, let's move on to the fourth category of birth control. So let's look at the hormonal methods. So hormonal methods would use synthetic hormones or man-made hormones that would prevent ovulation. So that is the release of egg. So it's going to prevent that egg from being released into the fallopian tube. And they can also work to prevent sperm from reaching the egg. So it actually thickens the cervical mucus, making it a little more difficult for sperm to swim through the female reproductive system. So the hormonal methods, they come in various forms. We have the pill, we have the injection, the patch, and the ring. But you must remember, you must know that all hormonal methods would require a prescription from a medical professional. So once again, you cannot go and just take it off of the shelf in the pharmacy. You have to get a prescription. Now, the first hormonal method, which is probably the most commonly used one, is the oral contraceptive, the pill. Now, the pill would usually contain the man-made estrogen and or progestogen, also known as progestin. So these are hormones that are going to pretty much mimic the natural hormones that would pretty much be controlling our menstrual cycle. So it inhibits the actual action of the natural hormones within our body that control the menstrual cycle. So they take over pretty much. So those hormones, estrogen and progesterone, those are the natural hormones of the menstrual cycle. The man-made versions, they're going to inhibit the action of those and therefore prevent the egg from being released and also can help thicken the mucus. Now how the pill works, so it should be taken 21 days of the cycle. So these are the 21 days outside of the period. 
So for 21 days, you take the pill. So that's every day. And there are some packs that actually have 28 pills. So the 28 pills is really to accommodate persons who may be forgetful and to really maintain that habit of taking the pill every day. So it would include the seven placebo pills. So as you can see in the diagram, this is a 28 day pill pack. The green ones are actually the ones that would be taken during the period. So the placebo pills actually do not have any hormones. They would simply have in like iron supplements, but they are hormone free. And it's really just to keep up, allow the person to keep up with the habit of taking the pills every day. So there's some parts that would just have in the 21, the 21 pills, and then some would have in the 28 pills. So the disadvantage of using the pill, and I'm gonna go into some more disadvantages, side effects and all of that at the end of all the hormonal methods. But when it comes to the pill, one of the disadvantages is having to remember to take a pill every single day at the same time. So this is when you will really need to have, you know, certain reminders maybe placed on your phone. But remember to take that pill every day at the same time could be a problem for many women. And not taking the pill every day at the same time would be a problem because it can reduce the effectiveness of the pill. So if you skip a day or two, then that can reduce the overall effectiveness of how the pill works at preventing pregnancy. And then a second disadvantage would be those pills that would contain estrogen. So the combination pills, they have in the estrogen and the estrogen is very likely to cause a lot of different side effects, which I will discuss later on. And it can also affect milk production in breastfeeding women. So therefore, those women who are breastfeeding are usually recommended to use the progestin only pill. So that is it about the pill. Now let's look at the second hormonal method, the injection, also known as Depor Provera, that's a particular brand. Um, the injection is just a, simply a shot of progestogen into the arm or the buttocks. So it would be taken four times a year. So the good thing about it is that, is that it usually lasts for three months which would be around 13 weeks. So it's not like the pill where you have to remember to take every day. So you get the injection four times a year, it lasts for that three months. And it's useful for women who cannot use the estrogen-based contraceptives. So those who are liable to get in, um, who are likely to get the different side effects and who have allergies, who are breastfeeding. So this is good for those women. So it's safe to use while breastfeeding because it only contains the progestogen. So the estrogen is what can stop um, breastfeeding women from lactating. So that is why it's not recommended for breastfeeding women to use the pill with estrogen. Now the disadvantage to this would obviously be for those women who have fears of needles, injections, so they may not really want to take this route, but generally the injection is good. So it's only taken four times a year. All right, the next one we're gonna look at is the patch. So that is under the brand Ortho Evra. Um, it's basically a sticky patch that will release a combination of estrogen and progestogen. So this is a, similar to the combination pill. So instead of taking it into the body, this patch would be releasing the hormones into the, the skin. So a combination, both hormones, estrogen and progestogen. Now the advantages to this is that each patch will be worn for a seven day period and that will be for three weeks. So once again, you don't have to remember every single day to put on a new patch or anything like that. So the fourth week, which would coincide with the week of the period, no patch would be worn. So you can wear the actual patch um, in the water, you can go to the beach, bathe as normal, swimming. So there's no worries about you know the patch coming off because of water. So it can actually remain in place even when you go into water. Now the disadvantage to this would be that you would have to remember to change the patch on time. So similar to with the pills, you know you have to really have reminders. So remember you have you're wearing the patch for seven days. Then you need to change it, put on a new one for the next week. 
at the end of that week you change it again so you do that for three weeks so you really have to remember the days to change the patch so you have to be on time with that because once again if you don't change the patch on time it can affect the effectiveness of the the um, patch and the hormones so so that is the patch and the fourth hormonal method is the vaginal ring and the brand is Nova ring so this is a flexible plastic ring that will be inserted into the vagina and releases the combination of estrogen and progesterone so pretty similar to the patch and the combination pill so both hormones are involved now the the ring is supposed to stay into the vagina for three weeks so you just put that ring in there for three weeks but then you have to remove it and remain ring free for seven days so once again these seven days will coincide with the time of the month the period so the ring has to be replaced um, the week after your period so remember this ring would only be inserted and kept in there for three weeks and then you're going to be ring free for seven days so the disadvantage to this obviously would be some discomfort having to insert and remove the ring that may be a concern for some women and then once again remembering exactly when you need to remove the ring okay so that is the hormonal methods so let's look at some things to consider before using hormonal methods so there are a range of side effects that can accompany um, hormonal methods so increased blood pressure headaches dizziness nausea vomiting weight gain spotting between periods irregular periods mood swings decreased sex drives and breast soreness all of these are possible side effects it's not to say that everyone who takes hormonal methods would get every single side effect but there's the likelihood of getting some of these effects and then there's terrible health risks such as blood clotting especially with the the methods that contain estrogen so blood clots heart attacks and stroke especially for older women breast and cervical cancer these are all health risks especially if you have a family history of these conditions but the advantages to using the hormonal contraceptives they can actually reduce the risk of ovarian womb and bowel cancers so these are some things to consider before using hormonal contraceptives so that's why it's very important to discuss it with your medical doctor your nurse to make sure that you are suitable to be using any of these hormonal methods that I mentioned all right let's go on to the final category surgical methods now with surgical methods obviously it requires a surgical procedure or insertion by a medical doctor so this would include the intrauterine device commonly known as the IUD the tubal ligation and vasectomy all right let's look at the IUD first of all so the IUD is a copper or plastic t-shaped or coil device which is inserted into the uterus now it is supposed to work to prevent implantation so implantation is when the embryo is going to embed into the uterus so the presence of the IUD is really to disrupt the normal uterine environment and make it less likely for the embryo to be implanted into the uterus so that is the main way the IUD would work but it can also work to thicken the cervical mucus and impede the sperm from penetrating and obviously swimming through the female reproductive system and these are particularly the ones that also release hormones because there are some that don't release hormones and then there are some that do so the IUD, the advantages to it, is close to 100% effective and it lasts between 5 and 12 years. So it's very, very long lasting. So once put into place by the doctor, you wouldn't need to worry about, you know, taking anything every day or every week, month. It lasts for a long time. You may need to get a checkup by the doctor just to make sure that the IUD is kept in position. So you may require a little checkup just to make sure everything is going well and in place. Now, the common disadvantages to using the IUD, first of all, obviously it requires insertion by a doctor. Some people may not be up for that. Secondly, it is not very commonly used due to the fears of infections and ectopic pregnancy. Now, ectopic pregnancy is when you have the embryo developing within the fallopian tubes 
rather than the uterus. So that is an actual dangerous occurrence and it can actually threaten the life of the, the mother, the woman. So that is one of the common fears. And in terms of infections, some people also have this idea that the, it, may, you know, it may attract a lot of bacteria, viruses, and it may also start to rust. But rusting is not going to happen inside the womb. In order for rusting to occur, you're going to need air, you're going to need water, that combination for rusting to occur. So that is nothing to fear. But the main concern is the possibility of the ectopic pregnancy happening. And then it can cause discomfort. And heavy menstrual bleeding is common for many women who have IUDs. So it makes the period extremely heavy, have that heavy flow. So these are some concerns related to the use of the IUD. So this is generally not recommended for women who have never had children before. So this would be more recommended for older women who have had their children before and have made the choice of not having any more children. So, so those are things to consider when um, considering thinking of having a IUD. Now secondly, we have the sterilization methods. So let's look at the tubal ligation first of all. So this is the cutting and tying of the oviducts so or the fallopian tubes in females. And then with the males, we have the vasectomy. So that will be the cutting and the tying of the vas deferens, which are the sperm ducts in males. So basically, once these surgical procedures are done, it's going to prevent, in, in the case with the female, is obviously going to prevent the sperm from reaching an egg since the the pathway there is disrupted. Now with the male, the vasectomy, it cuts off the sperm duct. So any sperm that would generally be released cannot um, pass or get out of the male during intercourse. So this is how the sterilization methods work. So they're permanent procedures. So that is really one of the key advantage. The procedures are usually permanent and are best for men and women who are 100% sure they don't want any children. Now, going on that point of being permanent, that could be considered a disadvantage. Um, so apart from the surgery being required, reversing the procedure may not be an option, especially when it comes to the females. So the tubal ligation procedure is actually a little more expensive, so that might be a disadvantage as well and is less likely to be reversed than the males. And it can come with chronic pain and discomfort after the surgical procedure has been done. And fluid buildup can occur in the testicles for men. So these are some things to look at um, when you're trying to decide if you want to take this route of having this permanent procedure done. So that's it for the final category of the birth control methods. And here's just a summary, um, a table to show you the different methods and factors to consider for each method to help in your determination of which method you believe may be best for you. But it's always best to consult your doctor and you can visit any contraceptive services available at medical clinics, family planning agencies, gynecologists to get advice and guidelines before making a decision on any of these birth control methods. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.